Welcome to the Brant Phillips Show, the show dedicated to results. Now, here's Brant. Welcome to the Brant Phillips Show, the show dedicated to results. Now, here's Brant. Welcome to the Brant Phillips Show, where I am ruthlessly committed to helping you create results in all areas of your life and business. All right, my friends, so let's dive into today's lesson. I'm calling this The Hungry Heart Hears Best. That's right, The Hungry Heart Hears Best. I recently read that, I believe it was in a Bill Johnson book I was reading, Dreaming with God was the name of the book, and uh, listened to it on you know on Audible, and uh, don't remember all the, f- the full context around that saying, but whenever he said it, it just stuck out with me. I shut the book down, and I just, I thought about that for a little bit, about the hungry heart here's best, and sometimes when we are most desperate, that is when we are most um, open to considering new things, to really looking at the results that we've previously created and most likely being dissatisfied with those results and really being real and raw and honest with, with what we've created. And this applies to any area of life and business. And today's, today's subject certainly applies to all areas of your life and your business um, applies to the F4, which, you know, that is faith, family, fitness, and finances. So later on that day, um, I was, I was at the office and, uh, a friend of mine came in, I was discussing, had a lot of really good things, um, clicking in business and some really good opportunities that come to fruition. And, and he was like, dude, you've made it. And, uh, I sit at my desk, and he and he said, "He's like, dude, you've made it. Like, you have made it." And immediately, almost to re- immediately, you know, my mind and my mind reacted, and I was like, "Hell no," you know. And I was like, "Dude, I'm I'm just getting started. Like, I haven't even made it." And then he was like, "Man, like you've done this and that. You've got this going on, like, like American Dream kind of stuff, right?" And so. And he, he's younger than me. He's in like in his twenties. And um and I was like, look, man, like consider consider that adopting that attitude or believing that mindset of that you've made it is one of the greatest mistakes that we can make uh as an entrepreneur and as uh, a man of faith, as a, a husband and a father. Um, you know, it in in our in our health and fitness as soon as we reach a certain you know uh goal in our weight you know or some physical uh fitness achievement once we think yeah i've made it that is where the plateau begins okay that is where the plateau begins and then that plateau we know at some point in time is just going to go down so that's something that i've always just kind of had inside of me is this mindset of like I have to just keep grinding, um, not only just to keep grinding, but just to get better. You know, um, a lot of times after we'll we'll celebrate a big victory in terms of you know a, a, a big flip or some business accomplishment. You know, I'm I'm not one to really celebrate um, because to me it's just like okay, what's next? Like, what is the next thing? Because whenever we Whenever we believe that thought um, that we've made it, guess what happens next? We're going to get lazy, we'll get soft, we get complacent, and all of those things lead up to us losing the edge, losing that edge, that um, just that killer instinct, that eye of the tiger, whatever you want to call it, that got us there in the first place. Right. Whenever we begin to like, oh, pat ourselves on the back, like we've done it, we've made it, we did this, that, or the other thing. I've seen so many investors who come in to the real estate game, and they uh, they're successful on their first deal. But this happens so often where they come in and their second or third deal is an absolute flop, 
And in in sports, you will, you will call this you will hear this referred to as the sophomore slump, right? That for, you know they have a great rookie season, and then it's a sophomore slump. So a lot of times that's attributed to just thinking like, oh, I got this, like I got this. This is easy. I did it last year, and and we get lazy, soft, complacent, and we lose our edge. And another thing in the business world, in the business world and arena, what happens is, uh, and, I, and I think that it is um, human nature to want to have this mindset of thinking that you've made it. But if you hold on to that, what's going to happen is the marketplace, your competitors, and things just in the marketplace, market conditions are going to change and they are going to shift. And because you weren't um, keeping that eye of the tiger and staying hungry, then you're going to get slaughtered, right? The pigs get slaughtered. And that's just, a, that's a fact. And we see that all the time in business. So I will, you know, just, I have like this internal um, mechanism, I, I guess you would call it, to trigger to say, like to not get complacent, you know, whenever I have that thought and, and I do want to have that thought sometimes and I do want to uh, rejoice for business successes. I do, you know, celebrate, you know, my marriage with my wife and we're actually going away today for, a, you know, get away for a few days. But also knowing that if I if I go into a relationship with my wife thinking, oh, we've made it like we've, we've made it. We've been married 14 years. And. We've made it. Well, guess what? There's still a lot of divorces that happen even after being married 14 years or just a lot of very unhappy marriages. And and that's that's not what I desire my my marriage. I want to continually uh, improve it, to level up the relationship, the connection, the experiences with my wife. So that is why having this hungry heart um, we are able not only to hear, but able to, um, you know, create uh, new experiences, goals, and things like that in, in all areas of our life. Hey, this is Brant, and I hope you're enjoying today's show. You know, if you're at a place in your life, or your business, or your real estate investing, where you just feel stuck, maybe you don't know what actions to take next to get you unstuck, or just on that path of creating the results that you really desire, please take a few minutes and go to my website at brantphillips.com. There's some really valuable resources and information that may be able to help you out. And if you're interested in really speeding up results with the help of a coach or mentor and adding true accountability and guidance to your life and business, please reach out to me from my website. You'll see a link at the top or by going to brantphillips.com slash coaching. Now let's get back to the show. So, you know, like, like I said, this, this mindset of having a hungry heart is going to affect every area of our life, spirituality, relationships, fitness, and certainly business. And uh, so it's just something for you to consider today to choose to adopt this mindset that, um, you know, that that you will never really quote unquote little asterisks quote unquote, never really make it right. That's my idea is like, I'm never really going to make it to a finish line where I can say, Oh, I've made it. And the reason for that simply is because I'm, I want, I'm committed to a lifelong pursuit to improve, level up, increase and expand upon what I've done before. Right. In other words, I stay hungry. You know, like the uh, the dos the dos Equis guy who's like, "Stay thirsty, my friends." Well, I'm here. To, I'm here to ask you to consider to stay hungry. Whenever you're successful, stay hungry. Immediately ask that question: How can I level up? What can I do next? Stay hungry. Continually. Continually. Deepen and seek to relationship. Uh, deepen your relationship with God. Look for ways to improve your marriage and relationships with with your loved ones and your children. 
Look for ways to feel better and perform better and eat better physically. And always look for ways to increase your wealth, increase your income, and improve the systems and the lifestyle that your business provides. No matter what level of the game that you are at in any of these areas, because life, as we know, and business, as we know, as you hear me often say, it's just a game. It's just a game. So wherever you're at in this game of life and business, consider there's always another another level. There is always another level. And that, you know, for those of you uh, type A, very aggressive um, folks out there, that's one of the things that keeps us driving, right? Is that there's always another level because the game of life and the game of business is not a sprint, my friends. This is a lifelong marathon. It is a commitment to to constantly seek, uh, quote unquote, making it, but not making it to a finish line, just making it to the next level. And when we make it to that next level, yeah, we might celebrate for a day, an hour, But then we need to roll up our sleeves and get right back to doing the work uh, when we reach new levels. So I read uh, one time, and I can't remember who this was, um, so I can't give them the the proper credit. But um, there was a rule. uh, They had this rule where whenever like things went wrong, right? When things went wrong, um, lost money on a deal, whatever. They had this rule. It was called the 20-minute rule. So when things go bad, things go sideways, you lose money on a deal, you fight with somebody, whatever whatever happens, this quote-unquote bad thing, which I like to call bad things, non-useful things, um, because really there is no bad if you glean a lesson from that and learn from it. Is it really bad? Actually, it's really good. So these non-useful things happen in our life. They had this 20 minute rule where it was like, all right, so I'm going to bitch, moan, whine, cry, sit in a corner, suck my thumb like a baby, punch holes in the wall, whatever you do to blow off stress, just let it out. Like, let it go. But like, we need to vent like that, right? But it's limited to 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you're doing nothing else than drifting and wasting time and playing the victim role rather than focusing on how do you prevent that from happening again? How do you improve results? How do you move forward to get things done rather than sitting there whining and crying? So love that rule. It's very hard. It's very hard to um, implement. It, it really is, especially like when you, you lose money on a deal or you fight with your wife. It's it's very hard to say like, all right, let's just hash this out right now and be done and just be done like really quickly, like right? Because we like tend to like hold on to things like, oh my God, why did this happen to me? Blah, 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 blah. Story, story, story. Victim, 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 blah, blah, blah. Rather than just saying like, okay, this happened. Let me vent. I'm going to go hit. That's why I have a punching bag in my garage and pull up bars because I like, I just, I could go vent physically. And that's a very useful way to get rid of this steam. So the reason I'm sharing that is, is that lesson can be applied as well in the made it uh, conversation. So when we make it um, to a certain goal, um, whenever, you know, something, you know, that we accomplish, it is useful to celebrate it, right? To celebrate success but not to a point where we rest on our laurels, where we get this egotistical type of, um, you know, attitude, but rather celebrate it so that it encourages us and inspires us to go seek and reach that new level. So, you know, you hear hear me talk a lot about setting physical goals, right? So this started uh, several years ago when I just felt really like I plateaued. I was, um, somewhat soft, somewhat lazy. And I, the, one of my coaches and mentors, uh, we were talking about just setting some goals. And uh, he mentioned about an MMA guy who was fighting an MMA cage fight. And the thought of that scared me, right? And probably would scare most people. But that thought scared me. 
And since that time, um, those of you may or may not know, like I signed up, I fought in a, a cage fight 90 days later and, and I proceeded to get my ass knocked out very, very quickly. And, um, but I felt alive again, right? Like the, the adrenaline, the juices, just the, uh, pursuit of a goal. And my goal at that time was just to fight an MMA cage fight. Maybe I should have set my goals to actually win the cage fight or at least not get knocked out. But the point is, since that time, I've went on to run multiple uh, half Ironmans, full Ironmans, uh, go through SEAL fit training, Navy SEAL training, and and do other things because I know that there's always another level. And whenever I stop, uh, stop striving for that next level, that's where I get complacent. That's where I lose my edge, and uh, that's where things begin to crumble and fall. Eventually, if I stay on that path. And uh, a couple last things I want to share. Like my uh, oldest son's, he as last football game of the season was uh, last week, and uh, it was a tackle football. And um, he didn't play a whole lot. It was a team of seventh and eighth graders, and he didn't he didn't get to play a whole lot. Play a little bit here and there, every now and then some kid would get banged up, and so he'd go and get to fill in. And uh, it was disappointing for him. And he, he, he's worked really hard. And, um, and so anyways, the last game of the season was last week. And, uh, you know, after the game was over, got in the truck, we're, we're riding home. And, and I was like, Hey bud, your first season to tackle football is over. You know, what are, what are your thoughts about it? What are your, you know, your, your thoughts, your, your memories, things you want to take away for next year. And, and he was like, dad, I don't really want to think about about it like that he's like i'm just thinking that this is the start of the new season i'm ready to, i'm going to start training because i'm going to play next year i'm going to be a starter you know it's something like that and i was like just really proud of him and it's that that attitude of just like yeah it was good it was great like what's next like what's next and um i've heard it also said by mark cuban he said something to the extent of like work like there's someone working against you 24 hours a day to take what you've what you've built what you've created right like wake up every day um with the mindset like today i need to go out and make my first you know my first dollar i gotta you know i got to go out and uh uh create new opportunities and you know in 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 perform in business or else i don't eat just kind of having that mindset and once again we can apply that to Staying hungry in every area of our life. Um, set new goals, set new challenges where you feel that you've become complacent in your faith, in your family, in your fitness, in your, in your finances, where you feel like you've lost the edge. I encourage you to go out today, set new goals, set new challenges, get off the sidelines if that's where you've been at, sitting on the sidelines and go grind go out there and grind so that's all i have for you today my friends um stay hungry stay hungry because the hungry heart here's best so that's all i got signing off and encouraging you to go out and create results in your life and your business You've been listening to The Brant Phillips Show. To listen to past shows, get updates on future shows, and find other resources or information about coaching, visit BrantPhillips.com. You've been listening to The Brant Phillips Show. To listen to past shows, get updates on future shows, and find other resources or information about coaching, visit BrantPhillips.com.